Hello, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. How is everyone today? If you were in the last stream and are hanging out now, thanks for staying. And if you are just now tuning in, thank you for joining us. Uh, we have a very exciting stream ahead of us. I'm your host, Shauna Lynn, and I'm here with the incredibly talented Silvana, aka Studio Silvana. How are you today? Hi, I'm fine. How are you? Oh, did I freeze again? I don't know. <laughs> You're doing fine with me. I don't know. What is, I don't know. know what is going on. How are you today? Hopefully everything caught up. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, I, I'm fine and I'm very excited to do this stream. So awesome. Well, we are very excited to have you today. I see Voodoo Val's already in the chat. Hey, Val. Um, so before we get started, just some quick housekeeping. Um, check out the first week of a new Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge with Andrew Hawkrattle every weekday at 11.30 a.m. Pacific. Don't miss out on this new set of challenges. Tomorrow, we will have the Artist Spotlight where we highlight and hype a member of our creative community. If you'd like to be considered for future Artist Spotlights, make sure to submit your Behance portfolio by clicking the tab above the chat tomorrow. If you are hanging out over on YouTube and you are watching the stream over there, come join us over here. I am reading the chat over on Behance. I will not see the one that's on YouTube. So make sure to come join us over on behance.net slash Adobe Live. And I can answer all, I can, I won't answer your questions. Savannah will answer your questions, but I will <laughs> relay them to her here. Um, and if you missed any of the streams this week, you can watch all the replays right here on Behance. Adobe Live is now hosting streamers outside of Behance when Adobe is offline. So definitely tune into their streams and check out their creative processes. And I think the chat's pretty excited for the stream. I'm doing a refresh to see if more people popped in. Um, yeah. So Silvana, would you like to introduce yourself and your work and tell the audience what you're working on today? Absolutely. Hi. So I'm Silvana. I am 28 years old and I'm an illustrator from the Netherlands. Uh, so it's currently very late over here. It's 9 p.m. And uh, I'm oh. putting on all the lights to hopefully light it up a bit here. Um, you could have fooled so, me. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> well, like I said, I'm an illustrator, but I'm also a designer and a photographer. Um, so I do a little bit of everything, basically, and I'm having very much fun doing it. Uh, I'm showing you a bit of my portfolio right now. Uh, these are some projects that I'm very happy with, very keen on. And uh, like you can see, it's, it's well, quite different. Um, everything is uh, very colorful. I love to play with colors and uh, that's what we're going to do today also. Um, let me see, I wanted to chat about this project in particular. It's uh, a book, it's called in Dutch, The Club van Ons. And it's uh, something I'm very, very happy with. Um, it translates to our club and it's a very cool book about uh, parents and their kids and they can fill in all of the questions that are in this book together and it's very cute. Uh, yeah, I'm very happy with that. And uh, well, like I said, I do loads of stuff. Um, I also have some personal work over here and I'm currently uh, yeah, kind of reinventing my style. So revamping oh, it. You can maybe uh, call it like that um, because I didn't really resonate with what I was making anymore. So yeah, finding out who you are as an illustrator is something that really happens uh, quite a bit. And um, I'm very excited to take you with me today. Very fun. We already have a quick question. Umicorn yes. says, ooh, Silvana is Dutch? Yes, I am. <laughs> So if you want to learn some Dutch today, just uh, ask me some questions in the comments and maybe I can answer them uh, along the way. It will be fun. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, like I said, I have uh, my portfolio, but I also have my Instagram over here. You can find me everywhere on Studio Silvana if you would like to. I'm pretty much called every uh, called Studio Silvana on every platform I can think of. So yeah, if you would like to find me, you can find me there. And um, I would like to tell you something about what we're going to do today. I will grab my Photoshop. Awesome. So as you maybe have seen in the title, we are going to make some digital planners today because uh, when I was asked to make a stream about editorial design, I was thinking, what can I do with it? What, um, what can I design that really resonates with me? And 
um, can I maybe uh, design something that I would need myself? And if I need one thing, I need uh, that's planning skills. So I figured it would be fun to create a planner together because if you can design one yourself, why wouldn't you? Uh, and that's, that's what I prepared, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so we are going to use Photoshop and uh, InDesign today. Uh, I'm not going to do this very traditionally. I am an illustrator, so I am going to make very uh, much illustrations like you can see. Uh, I'm working with very, uh, how do you say this? Like, um, not very straight lines, but like drawn by mm. hand. I am going to incorporate that into my design. And I prepared some illustrations beforehand uh, so that we can play with it. And today we are going to focus on a, uh, like a weekly planner, I would say. So we are going to make, uh, yeah, like a weekly thing that you can uh, print out yourself because I figured that would be very nice to, uh, yeah, for you to use. Um, and we are going to incorporate these designs. I have prepared some visuals and, um, yeah, that's a little introduction of what we're going to do today. Very cool. Oh, I'm so excited to see this. Oh, well, that's so nice. Um, let's yeah. see, because I um, prepared these illustrations beforehand, I am going to illustrate some things um, regarding what the chat would like to see, because Ooh, I think okay. it would be fun to uh, incorporate your guys' opinions or yeah, like uh, what type of colors you would like to use. Um, so I would need your he help along the way, but we're going to start in InDesign because I am going to bring everything together in InDesign. I really like InDesign for that because it's very um, nice to just play around with everything you make. And uh, yeah, so let me see. We are going to work with uh, A4 because that's pretty much what we use to print over here in Europe. I don't know how that's in the US. It's pretty standard size, but I don't know. I'll, I'll look, because I feel like it's probably close to what we <clears throat> use. It's close, right? Yeah, it's like a letter something. I don't know. Let me see. So, like I said, I have A4, but it might be different over there. I don't know that for sure. Um, we are going to work with some margins because I would like to have some guidelines when I'm creating this. Let me see. A4 is equal to eight and a quarter by 11 and three fourths. So that's kind of close to like our letter kinda size close. in the state. Yeah, letter yeah. size. It's like, yeah, right. It's just like a letter slightly size. off. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good to know because I will have to make this universal for everyone. <laughs> yeah. So you're, it's like within like points of, of an inch so. yes yes and uh beforehand i would say that i'm not good with any type of um how do you say this with numbers i have oh yeah no this cochlea i i, I believe it's that in, the, in okay. english yeah so i'm doing my very best but i confuse the four and the seven all the time i don't know why okay. So this it's is seven millimeters. <laughs> they do kind of look similar though when you when you write them out and stuff. So right? I, that's my. I've, I always say to people, yeah, I always tell people like I'm like I can't math. No, if I have to math, me. I can't math. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. I just don't come to me with any type of math question. I will not be able to answer you. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. So I have set the margins to seven millimeters, and I will use like let me see. I think five columns for this because we are going to put in the days of the week and I want to add another column to um, put in some notes or anything like that. Let me okay. see I have to check for sure. Yes. Okay. Like I said, numbers. So, <laughs> um, and I'm going to place the gutter at like four millimeters. That will be fine. Yeah. So we're starting with this. Let me see. And like I said, I am going to hand draw uh, different kind of things. So I'm also going to open a um, an A4 fi a file over here. I am going to do that horizontally and this will be fine. Okay, so that's uh, the setup for the documents. So we have an InDesign file over here and one in 
Photoshop over here. I'm just going to do the background to medium gray to create some contrast. And what we're going to start with is uh, like a header uh, for the title of the planner because uh, we would like to know what type of planner you're using. So let me see. So I have some brushes over here. And like I said, I like really rough lines and yeah. it has, uh, preferably it has some type of texture to it. I really love those uh, type of brushes. So let me see. These cow webs, your brushes are always so good. <laughs> they, oh, they're so good. They have always, always been my favorite, but now I don't use anything else, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Are you um, drawing with a tablet or are you drawing with a mouse? Yes, I'm tabling, uh with a tablet, yes. Okay. So that's right on the right of me over here. Okay. <laughs> I was going to assume because I'm like, I don't think I've ever seen anyone with, with that much control on a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> I have done that in the past, but it's a pain. So yeah. now I'm using a tablet. But when I was like 11 and I didn't have a tablet, I was like scribbling with my mouse. <laughs> I, I used to do that too. I, oh, when I so first started fun. to learn to paint in Photoshop, it was, I painted with a mouse because that's what we had. Yes, that's and what we had. We had to recreate a, um, what did we do? We had to recreate a, like a piece of art, you know? Oh, so I, that's nice. yeah, so I did this one. It was like a, a portrait of Marie Antoinette by Elizabeth Louis oh, Vigie Lebrun. Oh, that's so cool. And I didn't get very far. Like I got far enough that it was clear that I knew what I was doing, but my teacher was like, Sean, yes. please, it's going to take you too long to finish this. You're, you're too ambitious. You're, you're fine. Oh. I know. I trust that you know what you're doing. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. It's like, but I'm it's trying. nice. You had, a, you had so much ambition trying to do that with your mouse. Oh my God. Yeah. Everyone else was doing like a lot, like they were doing very simple things, not simple, yes. but things that were easier <laughs> to assemble in terms of yes. like flat color versus like something that was oil painted oh that's and so cute yeah so i was like oil painting like oil painting i was you know yeah drawing with a mouse with <laughs> transparencies <laughs> on a soft brush and i was like i don't know how i did that yeah right do you have the files still or you don't somewhere oh that would be so cool to see <laughs> yeah i i mean that was like floppy disk days yes so yes oh my gosh somewhere I do still have it because I saved it onto a hard drive, mm -hmm. but I have no idea what hard drive has that file anymore. Oh, right. Yeah. So you do know you have it somewhere. I have it somewhere because I, I found the files a few years ago when I was getting ready to give a talk because oh, I so wanted to show cool. like my first graphic design and yes. it's all really embarrassing <laughs> as it should be. Oh, um, yes. So I still have them. I just don't know where at this no, point. No, oh, but it's good to know that you have it because it's so sentimental, right? It's yeah. You, you always have to keep those. It's like pictures in the old days. You you just kept your pictures, yeah. but now it's like I I found a screenshot of like an iPhone in two thousand and nine, and it was like so oh small and everything, and it it was so weird to see because you don't see it very often. But like a little screenshot of a website, I I don't know what yeah. it was but it was so cool to see how the interface was looking and everything it's very weird <laughs> it really is and I remember too like when I was I don't know if you had to learn flash in school but I remember <clears throat> like yes. I had learned flash and it was because of the iPhone that flash yes. got um oh. phased out yes so yeah because I learned yeah me too yeah you I learned the learning... skill and can't use it yeah. anymore <laughs> I, I learned flash at the moment that iPhones were like getting interesting so we yeah. were like why are we learning this what what is using flash anyways mm -hmm. i think uh, when i learned it it was still like it was still implemented by some websites yes and it was still like there were still flash flash websites being built because i'm yes. almost 34 so i i was in college in like the 2006 to 2010 range oh yeah right um yeah. so like right at the beginning of the iphone yeah and as soon as yeah. they were like the iPhone doesn't do flash. Everyone's like, well, flash is dead. And Never mind. <laughs> like the next oh, year yeah. flash was done and they didn't teach it in school anymore. And I was like, well, that's a useless skill exactly. I have now. <laughs> that's exactly how it went with me. I was in like, um, how do you say that? It, it isn't like college. Uh, like in, high, in high school or? Yeah, we have a different system. 
I'm 28 now, but I was like okay. six, 16 when I learned Flash and I had to okay. uh, uh, reenact a pool table like with the balls and everything. <laughs> it was very oh, that's weird. Cool. That's the only thing I can remember. But it was very that... much fun because it was the first thing with animation and yeah. um, making things move and everything. But it was very discontinued the next year. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I think... uh, just quick explanation of what I'm doing right okay. now. I uh, have like made a banner and I'm just copying this into InDesign because I find that's the easiest way and it, I'm so it works. Glad I'm not the only one who does that. I was like, I thought that was like, should I do this? <laughs> should I like export everything? Yeah. I'm not no, I do this like it. all the time. Okay, okay, that's great. <laughs> Glad it's I'm so not much the quicker than like saving every little piece like out. I said, yes i was like am i going to use indesign because i do this like very not professionally but i think it's very much fun to see yeah. for everyone else because it's fine you know what <laughs> there's works. no wrong way if the file no, works right? it's fine <laughs> exactly that's what we're going with <laughs> so to begin i am going to um, make a little title of what this planner will be so this is a weekly planner and um uh, again, I'm just going to draw this because I like the look of it. So I'm going to grab a thinner brush. By the way, my voice is kind of going all over the place because I am I'm on the verge of being sick. <laughs> so oh, that's no. great. Yes, I'm feeling fine, but I, I feel it going away mm -hmm. and oh, it's crazy. That was, that was me the last couple of weeks. I got a oh. sinus infection. And mm -hmm. it took two weeks to go away, but now we have like weather changing. And today my sinuses are really dry and they hurt. And I'm like, oh, oh I'm gonna, crazy. I have to like, I, I'm throwing tea into my system as much as I can so that my throat doesn't yes. hurt, but I have yes. cough drops next to me if I need them. <laughs> my boyfriend did, did my grocery shopping this morning. He Aww. was like, you stay in bed. I will get everything or he didn't even say it he just went and he came back with a big bag and it was so sweet Aww, the guy. <laughs> so I had like fruit and smoothies and everything I was so worried Aww, I love it <laughs> yes get me too you, get you a man who takes care of you <laughs> right <laughs> no or but the weather is in yeah <laughs> No, the weather is always bad in the Netherlands I know I don't know if you uh, know anything about the Netherlands but no, well, it's always raining, so oh, okay. that's what we're dealing with. <laughs> and it's been getting very cold and dark, so oh, very. Yeah. Oh, we'll have to deal with it. Let me yeah. see. It's it's finally starting to cool. I say finally. It's been cooling for several weeks now, but it's like we're now peak fall. So oh, yeah like the trees are either completely bare or like there's yes. a couple out there that are like this really beautiful gold yellow right now yes oh, but everything best. is starting to die and lose its leaves and so the weather is also going down and like right now it's predicted that we're getting snow on sunday snow oh my god it's That's not gonna stick. early no yeah, but it's it's gonna be 40 so like it's not gonna stick um but it will snow it may like well, dust but it'll go yeah away. What is like for, uh, 40 doesn't. I, oh, you do you Celsius. Okay. Hang on. I'll yeah, we do. Like I said, um, I'm not good with numbers, but 40 no, degrees. Good. 40 is, is hot four in... degrees Celsius. Four. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's, it's so. a bit hotter, hotter. Well, it's a bit warmer over here. So. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Right now it's, it's, um, 10 degrees Celsius here. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're so kind of the same. Yeah, it's it's chilly. Like I have my window open just because it's really nice out. But yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. But yeah, come come the weekend, I think it's it's supposed to like drop to forty with snow flurries. So I'm so really weird. excited because I love snow flurries. It's very pretty, but it's not gonna. Yeah. You know, it'll it won't stick for a while, which is kind of nice. Oh, exactly. We had snow yeah. like last year, and it was for the first time in two years. And uh, oh wow. We're very keen on our snow, but it, if it doesn't happen, we're very sad. <laughs> yeah. As a country, it, it's just like, yeah, snow just has to happen at one point, but yeah. all global uh, warming. Am I right? Mm. <laughs> so we have a we have a question. All right. Yeah. Voodoo Val says, Silvana, what inspired you to pursue a creative career? Uh, well, 
I basically have been saying since I was able to draw that I would be doing something with drawing, be like a drawer. Uh, so that's what I became. So it's very, um, yeah, I don't know. I never had any other plans. So when I went to school and there was like a program for um, creative kids to join the art academy at a very young age, I did that uh, in my high school, I think. Uh, when I was like 11 to 16 and after that I went to the, cool, uh, the school where I learned flash <laughs> and um, was very much fun too but that was also a very creative school so I very much yeah learned along the way what I wanted to do and um, I never really thought about it twice I, I really always knew what I wanted and uh, being an illustrator was something that just came along the way really so yeah Awesome. We have people now showing up. I wonder, were people, Val, were people in the in the AI creative challenge? Because I know that there was a Discord going on, like a Discord hang happening. Kevin says, fellow Dutchie in the house. Oh, hi, Kevin. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, we get people from all over. We've yeah, I was wondering, do, do people like come yeah. from all over the world? Oh, that's so nice. I've, some of the like really wild ones to me were like, we've had Nigeria. Wow. Um, we get we get quite a few people from like the Africa area. So we've oh, had like Nigeria. So cool. um, I think we had a couple like South Africa. Every now and then we'll get like um, some Australians. It depends like the time because over there, obviously it's like midnight. Exactly. Yes. Um, yes. So sometimes you'll get the one like random person that's like, oh, I was up late working, so I'm hanging out, but it's 2 a.m. here. Yeah. And I'm like, you are nuts. 2 a.m. Oh Thank you, gosh. but you are nuts. Like, yes, it's quite late over here, too. I mean, I told my boyfriend to just come home when the stream ended. And I just realized since the our time has gone an hour early, I believe. Oh, yeah. It, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't back. like 10. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess. Oh, yeah, God. I, I, I can't Daylight remember. Savings time. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Okay, so, so it's like yeah, an hour spring later. forward, fall back. Yes, exactly that. So he was like, I thought it was like done at 10. And I was like, oh, well, it's 11. Uh, so, <laughs> but I, I said he just could come home anytime. <laughs> he just yeah. feels very like, I don't want to disturb anyone. So <laughs> that's very sweet. Uh -huh. That's fine. We have a... Nice. Uh, Viola says Nigerian here, but living in Brooklyn. I was just in Brooklyn oh. last week. Oh, um, so nice. And Viola says Steve stays up quite late. And Steve says he's a Canadian living in New Zealand. Wow. And Amir says it's 1.30 a.m. here in Pakistan. My goodness. Oh, thank you for staying awake with us. Yes. So cool that you're here. <laughs> thank you. Like I said, we get up. Sometimes I think we get more people like across the world than we get in our own area. Like, yes, because everyone's at work right now in the States. Yeah, that's also a thing. Like I, I told my uh, followers on Instagram, for example, and they were very like uh, excited to come. So I hope they're watching. But uh, it's yeah, it's so crazy. Like nine o'clock in the evening, some people just want to watch TV or any. I get that. <laughs> yeah, I always liked um like I, I've been watching Adobe Live for years because I've been oh, I've been freelancing since like 2013. Oh right, and yeah. So it's like it's always been kind of nice because it's like I can I can what I do what I call work and lurk. So oh I'm, yes, me too. Yeah, so I'm working like so I'll be working and I'm not actually interacting in chat, but I yes. am still there. And then it kind yeah, of feels you, like I'm in a co-working space, right? Yeah, you can just uh, listen and learn, so that's so nice and. Uh, it's always nice to have something in the background, especially when you're a freelancer. It's like it gets quiet. So you just put up a video or anything that at least is what I do or a podcast or it's very nice. Yeah. Let me see. OK, so I'm almost done with the text on that. I want to put some stars. Lurky is coined by Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Pila says, I ran into a coworker in chat once while we were both working. We both slowly oh. crawled out of chat. Oh, <laughs> slowly crawled out. Oh, that's such say, a coincidence. Yeah, it, it, it has 
become a lot more active now that people are working remotely, which is kind of fun. Yes, I figured that will be fun because it, everyone has the time to just put up something for themselves instead of being in a work mm -hmm. working space or anything. Yeah, even if it's just up and you're listening to it, because I'll I'll yeah. use some of this for like white noise sometimes, yeah. just so there's noise. Yes. Do you always have anything on? Because that's me. <laughs> yeah, I can't work in complete silence. No, me neither. No. But I also can't w listen to anything with words sometimes. Like yes. if I listen to a podcast <laughs> and I get into heavy work mode, like it's just noise at that point. So yes. I won't remember yeah. anything I just listened to. Yeah. So if it's something that I have to pay attention to, I can't play it. So it's no, often that's... a lot of like YouTube videos that I rewatch over and over again. <laughs> Same. I always have like studio vlogs. I really enjoy those. Oh, because yes. It's like um, well, a, a bit of how, yeah, seeing how others work and everything. But I really yeah. want to pay attention to those. So when I put them on on the background, I always see myself going back and scrolling through the parts that I missed. So, I had yeah. that. Yeah, I, I was watching studio vlogs last year and I found that happening and I was like, I need to work, but yes. they're so cute. Yes, <laughs> they're the best. Yeah, oh, so really... I, excuse me, now that I like, and now that it's like the holiday season, mm -hmm. I'll play like my holiday playlists and those, oh, yes. those will not distract me. If I have words in those, I'm actually okay because I've listened to them for 34, almost 34 years. So <laughs> yes. I will like... Uh robotic like it's kind of just I don't think about it and I'm just like singing along to it but it's just noise yeah exactly you know? it's just but those yeah but those don't distract which is kind of nice yeah because you know them yeah That's yeah so cool. <laughs> okay so let me see okay took a while but I have like a little how do you say this like a little title and I'm going okay. to copy this again oh this it's so her. cute I love it <laughs> And the, uh, the reason that I do like to bring everything into InDesign is because it's, um, I feel it's like a little bit more structured, like you have mm -hmm. uh, the, the, how do you say this? The lines, the... Oh, the columns? Yeah, the columns. It's yeah. Kamin in Nederlands, in Dutch, so it's... Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, the column guidelines. Guidelines, yes, that we're, yeah. what we're referring to. So you can find the... Oh, let me see. <laughs> middle so all right so we put up weekly planner the next thing that i'm going to do is make some columns for the days so let me see we have uh people are are chatting about meetings and oh really <laughs> oh, there's like, yeah there's like a lot of a lot of talk going on now steve says nice. always have music or a podcast on Dana says, I love yes. to hang out here because I feel like I'm with my creative community. Yeah, that's um, so true. And then Biola says, I have to have the radio going, listening to y'all. And sometimes I have to use headphones so I can half listen to the meeting if the meeting is boring. <laughs> that's yeah, also a nice one. Yeah, I can't do two headphones. I don't like not being able to hear no. like what's around me. So if I'm at a coffee shop, it's a one headphone, like a just an earpiece only. Yes. I don't... I. Back when I worked in an office like years ago, if I had two headphones in, I would completely mm -hmm. zone out and be in the groove and then someone would come up and I can't tell you how many times I jumped out of my skin. Oh no, I, I just I, couldn't do that. No. Yeah. And they're like, did you not see me coming? And I was like, no, <laughs> no, was especially the with the noise canceling and everything. You just yeah. don't hear anything. It's very scary. Like, oh. Yeah, I was like, and, and and the the funniest part of it was like I faced out of my office, so like it's not like I could oh, yeah. have possibly seen someone walk in, but no, exactly. If I would like, it's tunnel vision, so mm -hmm. you don't see anything. No. Yeah, so I get, I I get, I jump a lot, and they're like, you, you, you know, we're here. You I didn't like, hear no. me? <laughs> no, yeah, I didn't. Like, I know you're here. It's an open concept office. I know. I just didn't. Nope. <clears throat> No, I'm didn't sorry. expect it. <laughs> no, um, exactly. Yeah. Oh, Savannah, uh, Val, uh, so Val says, Savannah, what other creative, what other creatives inspire you? Oh, so many. I should have prepared this, right? I have so many people that I follow on, on Instagram that uh, it just grows by the day. 
Uh, I really like the Explore page. So I, I find someone every day. But uh, people who really inspire me uh, are Cheyenne Barton. I don't know if you know oh, her by I any know chance. Her, yeah. uh, she makes awesome studio vlogs too. But I lo really love um, the journey she has had, she's been through. Because I've been watching her for for years maybe and she only after a couple of years became um, interested in illustration and developing her style and seeing her grow was so yeah like cool to see it's it's really yeah. crazy to uh, yeah just grow along someone if you know what I mean mm -hmm. because I have been a freelancer since 2015 so I've been okay. doing this for a while uh, even when I was still in school but we didn't have that much of or that many people to, I don't know, look up to. It's It was like very big illustrators. Like I couldn't name any of them right now, but it's uh, these these like micro illustrators, if you can call them like that. They're very inspiring because they're just like us. And I think that's so cool. So, yeah, yeah. that's one of the people that I really admire, but also, um, well, I'm just thinking of studio vlogs now, but for a little peach. It's all, oh, yeah, also great. someone that oh, it is so cool to see how she does everything and uh, her work is so uh, vibrant and yeah, always inspiring. So yeah, mm -hmm. have Those you are seen um, Apple Cheeks? Yes, I have been following her for a couple of months now. She's so cute. <laughs> I know. She started doing them. She started doing the studio vlogs just for fun, and then it's been fun watching like how they've improved over time. Right. Yes. That's so nice to see. I have been doing uh, some studio vlogs myself too, but I haven't been keeping up. Um, I really enjoy, enjoy doing them, but there's so much work. It's crazy. So I, yeah, I made, I made that. I, I attempted last summer. I was like, I'm going to do yes. studio vlogs. And I lasted like maybe four. Oh, and then so I was like, I burned out. I was, I was yes. burned out over everything at that point. So I was just like, nothing was no. like getting me to create anything, but Yes, I did. Do, I did do one though for a, a fishing trip, which turned out really nice. So oh, that's so nice because I have had a look at your portfolio and you have make such yeah. cute things. It's so pretty. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> really um, inspiring too. By the way, so yeah, just oh. like I said, I run run into people online every day, and I just like saving every thing that uh, inspires yeah. me. And oh, there's so many people. <laughs> It, it's really amazing how much the internet has changed yes. even just in the last, I mean, in the last, I graduated in 2010, it's 2021. I'm going on 11 years. Oh my God. That's so Yeah. Crazy. 11 years since I graduated <laughs> college. So back then I remember I always have my um, friends and I was just like, like, what did we have in school? Cause we didn't have Pinterest. We didn't have like, there wasn't a lot when it came to Google no. search and yeah, no Twitter. Instagram no. didn't come out until a year after I graduated. Oh, that's um, so crazy. Like I remember I had to go to the library and research in books <laughs> to find inspiration. Or yes. we had we had the Swiss Miss blog and we had uh -huh. um Obdizito as well. Oh, I don't know. Those, those were like yeah, those I think is Swiss Miss still around? Is a great question. Is Swiss Miss Yes. I know that the it's um Tina her last name uh tina roth eisenberg is oh, who created gosh. it and the oh well the block is still is actually still there and it's still active. is it oh that's that. so cool i could have i think at one point there was like a break mm -hmm. because i i feel like i remember like a like a this is it we're done for a while block mm -hmm. but is obduzito around though though obduzito that's so cool that they're still there. Yeah, so like, Swiss Miss is still there. And oh my God, Advisio, he's still around. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Just what we we're talking about, like uh, things from the past and refinding them. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah. Oh my God. Also, gosh. Have, like, the <laughs> web archive. Have you ever used that? I love the archive, the web archive. <laughs> I used to make websites in 2005 when I was like, I don't know, 11 or 12 years old and make little websites. And I just a while back, I found them. <laughs> it oh was so gosh. crazy to see. 
very cute. I would not be able to tell you what mine were because I definitely had a GeoCities. Yes, yeah. Well, we have like uh, a platform in, in the Netherlands that's called uh, I'm Online. And I used to make okay. websites all the time. And I met so many people that I still have on Facebook or like Instagram oh, how fun. <laughs> since that time. So it's, yeah, I w really was like an online person making friends online. And yeah. Yeah. I remember, <laughs> I remember early on in like the art career, back when like DeviantArt was still fairly newish. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember my mom telling me like, you shouldn't, you should not have an account on a site called deviant art like that sounds really <laughs> scary i'm like it's an art website <laughs> everything sounded was, scary yeah well and it's funny because it was always that like you know growing up it was like don't talk to strangers on the internet yes. don't <laughs> yes. you know don't do this don't do that don't give out information <sighs> to strangers on the internet and look at us no. now Some yes of my look best at us friends now. were strangers on the internet right <laughs> like, yes my boyfriend was a stranger on the internet we've known each other for 12 years so you can imagine yeah. like at the beginning of internet like my parents were like you're not meeting anyone from the internet so uh yeah but here we are, <laughs> here we are. it's crazy how things so crazy. change over the years and yeah now everyone's on tinder i'm meeting everyone online and mm -hmm. there really okay so i fun. let me see i wanted to give a little update on what i was doing okay so I made some columns, like I said, <clears throat> and um, I have grabbed a habit tracker. I don't know if anyone is familiar with that, but I really like those on planners, like keeping up with uh, your habits. Like, have you oh, yeah. uh, reached your goal of drinking uh, eight glasses of water every day? And you can just check that out. Or have you been feeling OK? Or you can just put anything. Mm hmm. So I made a little template for that and I'm just going to see how much room there is going to be for that because um, I asked a friend of mine like what do you like to see in a planner and she's like don't use bullet points because okay. some of us write really big <laughs> and we're annoyed when we have to write on the next line with mm -hmm. like a bullet point in front of it and I was like oh I never thought of that <laughs> that's really that's smart a... yeah one of the things I've seen too is like there's a lot of digital um, journaling people will do in like what is that what that app Good Notes? Yes, like I've on the seen iPad that too. Yeah, I've seen people do like bullet journaling in that. And I'm just like I they're wish going I was crazy. Good to do that. Oh, have you tried bullet journaling? Or I have, and I'm too. I am too critical of the design when I have to do <laughs> it. I'm too. like I can't. I just I can't let it go can't. enough to make it happen. No, same. I'm just, no, I just gave up after two pages. It was really nice to see the design and then I had to fill everything in and do it all over again. And I was like, nope. Yeah. I started using, me. yeah, I, I, I started using Notion to track my stuff. And so yes. I can design, I can design yes. the page and I can make it work and just reuse it and, and make mm -hmm. a template. And that has worked really well for me. Okay. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah, that's yeah. worked well, but it took some, it took a lot of trial and error to like figure out how it worked. Yeah. But now that it's done, I create like little illustrations for each month and yes. switch them out. And yeah, so. now you know how it works and everything. I think Notion was very overwhelming for me, but I can see like a lot of, um, you can do so much with it. So yeah, you can make it very simple or very complicated. It's just up to you. That's yeah, very I nice. I started using it because of Apple Cheeks. Um, oh, really? Blog about it. Because mm -hmm. I was like, well, if if Apple Cheeks can figure it out, maybe it's not that hard. That hard, yeah. That's something. Like, that's always the thing that I need. Like someone who is like me that's also using it. Then I'm yeah. sold. <laughs> it worked. Yeah, and it's it's worked really well. And like I said, it's been a lot of trial and error. But I started with their mm -hmm. template. And then I modified their template to what yes. was working well for me and like what bits worked, what bits didn't. And then oh, now, because cool. originally it was broken up by like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Well, I don't work well yeah. that way. My brain doesn't no. think that way. No. I just need a running list. <laughs> yes. So yeah, that's I've different now, for everyone. Yeah. So I've not done away. I have like a one, I've got one spot where it says like, this needs to get done first. This is the priority. Yes. And then this is the underneath is like the rest of the stuff you need. <laughs> yes. But it's not as important. <laughs> No, oh, exactly. That's what we're going to do today, too, because I have like um, a column left for 
very important things and then after that one it's the big one it's like a, a general to-do list because i need okay. more to-do lists than yeah. one i just need some uh, space to fill in uh, what I have to do each day and then a list for important things and oh, I just couldn't find the right planner so I'm very glad yeah. that I'm making it right now <laughs> because uh, and I hope others will find it helpful too because oh, I don't know there's so many online and I, I just are. couldn't find the right one and this one's so. already so cute thank you so yeah. right now we're over yeah, we're, we have like the layout set. Um, what I need to do next is I'm going to insert a, let me see, I have a background here. Um, that's also a thing. Some people like lines, some people like oh, uh, yeah. things like this or nothing at all. But I have to write, oh, at least I can write in a straight line. I always need some guidance. So I figured I'd uh, put this little, how do you call it? um like graph paper Grid yeah paper? i guess the graph paper, yeah and i made it like uh half a centimeter and oh. i write very small but this way you can just uh use like two blocks or one you can decide for yourself i just thought i'd leave it open instead of me lining everything so what i'm going to do is i'm going to insert it over here and just pop it right in oh very nice and I think that I'm going to, re oh, not resize it, but just oh, nice. line it so up you, with. So you can make it as big or as small as you want. Yeah, exactly. So okay. I always really like drawing on like these um, square papers. Square papers, I don't know. It's, yeah, I, uh, grid words. paper is what it is. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's because there's grid and then there's dot grid, grid which is the one with all the little dots yes. versus the lines. Yes. I really like those two, but I just, there's something with the grid paper that really. Yeah. I like dot grid, but dot grid is a hit or miss for me because mm. like sometimes you get it and it's the, the dots are too dark. Yes. Um, and then it yes. vibrates. Like yes. visually it vibrates. And so I can't use anything that's got too, too dark of a, of a, dot if I use a dot grid it's oh, really weird. like it's a really basically the same like person thing. because I have these this exact problem yeah I was also like contemplating how uh dark I wanted these lines to be because every printer is different so it, they have mm -hmm. to show up at, in some way but I don't want them like you can see I I just faded them out quite a bit and they're not as even as they would be if I just made them myself but that's also because of the aesthetic but I really yeah. like the feel of um like it's it's real paper when you yeah. print it out it, it, it is real paper but you know what I mean I think I, yeah <laughs> no I, I get it yeah yeah we do have nice. another question too nice um, so Lori would like to know I'm curious about how you go about finding projects or <clears throat> are your do a lot of your clients approach you online that's a great question. Um, so most of the time they find me and I'm very fortunate for that because uh, in the beginning, I think every artist has this. They have to like adjust to their client because they want something. So you'll have to adjust to the style that they want. But um, along the years, people come to appreciate your work and they come to you because of the things you make. And that's so nice because uh yeah basically all my clients were like i saw your instagram or just Aww. yeah anything that they came across and uh they really like my stuff so that's like i said i'm very fortunate it doesn't go like that uh each time but it's most of the times um that they find me and that's really cool like the project i showed you like the, um, the book um mm -hmm. uh, with the, the the kids and the the parents that they can fill in uh that was someone that just found me on instagram and really wanted to uh wanted me to illustrate it and it was such a nice collaboration um but i also have like reached out to other people i think that's very important when you want something you just go and ask because you never know and um yeah you Worst never know what they're going to no. say <laughs> right yeah 
we have a saying for that in the Netherlands, I don't know. <laughs> but it's, yeah, uh, very important that you just go for it, basically. Yeah. I think that waiting around isn't the way to go. I always advise people just to uh, go and send your portfolio to a possible client or just reach out to someone that you really like to maybe see if they want to collaborate or anything. Uh, I yeah. have done that and that's yeah always nice because uh, I'm not a full-time illustrator. Mm -hmm. I have a job next to this and that's where the photography, uh, photography part comes in. Uh, but I'm also a content creator for a jewelry shop in the Netherlands oh, and I used cool. to shop there. It's in my hometown and it's a fairly popular web shop too in the Netherlands and it's so cool. And they uh, needed a logo and they just put up um, like an, I don't know, like a, not an ad or anything, but just a question in a Facebook group filled okay. with uh, young women who have like their own businesses. And I saw it was like uh, the jewelry shop and I was like, oh my gosh, I really want to do this. So I just oh, I, like so spammed cool. them like, can I come over or anything? And they were like, well, we had your work in our mood board. So yes, please come. <laughs> so it was such a coincidence. So I got oh, to you must have felt so good. <laughs> yes. Oh, that was so nice. And now I work there like three days a week and it's so much fun. And I have the best time of my life because I get to do what I love. And um, yeah, so that's also something that came along just because I sent that message. So I think that's also very important just to just to do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah, that's very have, cool. Some of the work I've done, I do... Um, stuff for my old ice rink a lot and oh, yeah yeah and I've got that mainly because they I, have, I haven't done any lately but back when I started there um in my old town mm -hmm. they were just like starting to um what's the word like, like they were kind of like regrouping the whole thing rebuilding oh, yeah, yeah. the programs mm -hmm. um and they didn't have any design or flyers or anything so I went to my skating oh, yeah. director and I was like listen I will do this for free <laughs> yes. just let me have full creative freedom yes and, <laughs> which like you know if you can get paid get paid and she did insist exactly. on getting paid but I was like you you're giving me free ice it's a good it's a we can call this even okay yes and uh exactly but I got to have a lot of creative freedom with it I made posters I made flyers and oh, I was yeah. there a few weeks ago and they're still using all of it oh. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah sometimes like, it's just oh. like doing <laughs> things for free is also like very controversial. But sometimes when you just really feel like this is going to be something that I could put in my portfolio or just mm -hmm. is so much fun to do, you just have to follow your heart and just do it. Right. It's like, yeah. And sometimes if it's something that you're really passionate about. Yes, exactly. It's, it's fun to do it. Like I help a friend with t-shirt designs and I don't oh, get paid for so it. Cool. It's, I do really, I mean, it's really quick ones. It's nothing like exciting or anything, but mm -hmm. I have, I have lots of really fun copy ideas. So oh, she just cool. lets me go nuts. And it's really fun because for me, it's just a passion thing. And mm -hmm. I, she makes all the shirts and I get to watch people get really excited about oh, the designs so that I've cool. put together for her. Yeah. But that's like you said, that's something that's so much fun to do. And that's, yeah, so much how do you say that it's it's worth so much yeah it's so cool yeah it's it's good for like your soul <laughs> yes <laughs> and sometimes you don't get to do things that you really enjoy like some sometimes there's just projects that you just do because yeah why, why not but um, yeah. like passion projects are very important and I always do those um yeah, when I when I just feel like creating something that I want to create and I yeah. don't pay myself for that, but it's just like you, sometimes you have to and that's very important. And I and I think sometimes too, like if you got paid for certain things that you do just because you're passionate about it, it would take the mm -hmm. fun out of it. Yes. Yes, exactly. That's also at that something point, that feels like a job. And... Yeah. It's also something that I do with hobbies. Mm -hmm. I sometimes I get the question like do you have hobbies and well maybe I it, I do this to myself but I make everything or every hobby I make it into work 
Like I just bought some <laughs> some things yes. for um, punch needling, and I really, oh, I have watched again so many vlogs on punch needling, and I was like, oh, I would I would love to do this, and then maybe I can sell them and everything. And then my my friend was like, no, you're not gonna sell them. You're just going to have this as a hobby. <laughs> so, who knows? I don't know, but oh. yeah. I know that that feeling though. It's really hard to like to keep yourself from like trying to monetize everything. Yes. Cause then you're like, I made it and people want to buy it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then you're yeah. like, well, now I'm bored. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it's not fun, fun anymore. anymore. No. <laughs> I can't tell you how many hobbies I did. I used to live near Disney. And so I made like flower crown Mickey ears. Oh my God. That's so and I just, cool. I did it for fun. Cause I enjoyed them and they were like wire ears and like little flower crowns. And they were oh really fun. Gosh. Yes. And then my friends were like, can I buy these? And I was like, I'm going to make an Etsy shop and I'm going to do this. I'm gonna do that. And as soon as I did that, I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Oh yes. That's I just me. Stopped. It's horrible. I was oh. like, okay, I would do better. Just like having these friends over and us just doing a craft night with all of this. Stuff yes. Now. Yes. Oh, we just ruin it for ourselves. <laughs> I know. And I don't know what it is. It's it, no. there's an actual, like, what is it? It's like a, there's an actual term for this or yes. like a, a I thing was thinking like, of that, but yeah, if oh anyone God. chat knows the term, because I feel like I mean it's a common thing, especially with creatives, because we love what we do. Yes, but it's 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 so hard because you're constantly thinking of like you know when people want things, you're like oh maybe I should sell this, you know, I or if you're like that for you, yeah, yeah. So sometimes I'll do like the if you just pay me the cost of of materials, I'll make it for you thing. Yeah, yeah. At that that's point, a like with thing. that, yeah, because with that, yeah. then it's like. I, I can still enjoy the making because I'm not technically getting paid for it. They're just covering the cost of the material. Yeah. So I'm not yeah. going in the That's red. That's so smart. Yeah. But it's not yeah, often it's... that I do that anymore. No. <laughs> oh, I yeah. Bet. I have, I've just made like portraits for years and it was like a thing in my web shop. And I still get questions to this day like, do you do portraits anymore? And I just quit because even though it, it was going very well. Mm-hmm. Every time that I got an order in my mailbox, I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> and yeah. it was, that was like a sign for me to just don't do it. Just, just quit. Yeah. And maybe one time or, or one day you'll just get to it. But no, yeah, it wasn't had, fun at all. I had that with pet portraits because I, I started doing them because I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to raise money for the rescue that I adopted my dog from. Oh, that's so nice. And yeah, so I did this thing where I was like, if you donate like $10 or more, send me the re- like, send me a proof of the receipt and I will create a dog portrait for you. Oh, what I didn't amazing. realize was like, you can't write that off. So, because I wasn't the one specifically donating to the rescue. So no. I couldn't write, I, it wasn't a write off, but it was fine. I did like 50 portraits. Oh, that's crazy. And the first several took a long time. And then I got into a groove where each one I could do within about a half hour. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, and it was worth it because the rescue reached out to me and they're just like, we, we got word that like, you were the one doing it. We know how much you love oh. Teddy and we're so happy you have him. And we just wanted to say, thank you for doing this. Cause we raised, oh, it ended up raising so like $1,100. Whoa. Yeah. It was like, I think it was like 1,075 or it was like very close to hitting $1,100 towards Whoa, them at the holidays. So cool. So like, it felt good in my heart. Yeah. And then the next year it was like, cool. yeah. And, but of course, then the next year people were like, are you going to do them again? I'm like, yeah, but I have to charge for them. And then people, well, it was fewer people wanted them because they had to pay $50 and. Oh yeah. And, oh, and it was like, whenever exactly. I got them, I, I did one year, I had one guy that like really made it difficult where he sent me a picture that was like from the early 90s and it was poor quality oh god <laughs> it was yellowed and he was and when I sent him the 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 scat or the final he's like are you sure this you are you sure that this is my dog because this wasn't my dog are you sure you used the right photos yeah and I was like yes I did he said can you send me different ones because how else am I gonna like I, how his dog is clearly gone. Like yes. I can't ask for new photos of this dog. No. Um, and I bet and it's a long time ago. So the pictures that you got are the only ones. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, can you, do you have a few more? I'm willing to give this another shot. Yes. So he sent like a couple more that were still grainy and, and blurry. And just, so finally I just redid it and I never heard from him again. And I was like, well, that's it. 
Oh, that's horrible. Yeah. And then and after that, I was like, I don't really want to do these for a while. No, exactly. But I did well, open them, open up orders again. So yes. we'll see if anyone does them, you know, orders like recently the or like this morning. <laughs> this morning. Oh yeah. my gosh. People go and buy a yeah. portrait. <laughs> So Val's in chat. She goes, "What? Are you sure this what? is my dog? Oh no! Oh Val, remind <laughs> me. I will, I, I I will detail it to you later. You you'll have to see what. I I still have the files. Oh, I'm so curious. It's, I feel so bad because like I wish I could have done better for that one, but like I can only work with. Sometimes what I've got. you can't. Sometimes they yeah. have to help you out because I have had this exact thing. Like they send a picture of a woman, and it was like. Mm-hmm from so far away and she was looking down oh and so i when you go to my website and well when it was still up you had to um or you had to like uh fill in what type of color the 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 eyes were and everything and some people just said oh, blue smart and oh. it but when when i got the feedback it was like yeah but it's like an icy blue and i was like oh yeah well you could have just said it. that <laughs> I can't read your mind. No, right? And oh yeah. Oh but my gosh. people were always very grateful and it was very much uh worth it when I got their response. But yeah, just but doing it over and, and over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So maybe one day, but it just took up so much time. Mm-hmm. And I didn't got get very much feedback, but when I got the got it, it was like yeah, I don't know, like very picky people, which is totally oh, yeah. fine because you want it to be perfect, but I don't know them in real life. So I really just have to do it with the pictures they send. And it's sometimes yeah. it's so hard. <laughs> yeah, because you, you can only work with what you're provided, you know, yes. you don't, you know, there could be something very small that they're like, well, this doesn't, this doesn't show through. And it's like, we well, got to tell me what this is because I can't, yeah, I can't interpret that. Exactly. Yes. Also, I love your handwriting. Oh, thank you. I do my very best. (laughs) Yeah, some people ask me if it's my real handwriting, but yeah, it is. Um, I I really try a little bit harder, though, because uh, it has to look nice, but... All right, so we're almost there. This takes up a lot of time, too. Yeah. (laughs) No, at the beginning of the stream I also was like yeah I don't know how, what what is going to take me the longest or we're just going to see but this is going quicker than I thought yeah now it's really cute Thank um you. people are also talking in the chat about about paper back to like the grid paper combo oh yeah um and they were saying like Let's see. Kevin said, like, grid or dotted paper helps me to get something started. Blank pages don't work for me. No, same. And yeah, and it's it's weird because it's like if there's something already on the paper, it actually it makes it a little easier because you don't feel like you're going to, like, mess it up. Yes. Um, and then Umicorn says, blank only works when they have a clear idea, but they don't get inspired with a blank page. Yes. And Val says, I feel the same way, but I don't use a canvas with grid or dots on it, I change the color of my background to a gray or a color that goes with my project because oh. creating on a canvas that isn't blank white isn't as daunting. That's so smart. Wow. That is smart. And then, it's- um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, someone had said something to, I'm looking for it because there was a mention of Kyle Webster and something that he sells. And I'm trying oh, to really? see if it was... Uh, Steve says Kyle has three of his favorite paper backgrounds up for grabs in his Gumroad site. Well, I have to have a look at that because I use yeah a lot of paper textures. I really love those, so that's great. Good to know. Sometimes it's fun to sketch digitally on on fake paper, like real paper. Yes. That's, you know, fake Sometimes I your... do that. Like I put a, put a paper like uh, background first. <laughs> yeah. Just to, I don't know, it just helps. I it, It's it's crazy. I also don't like to sketch on like big paper, like A4 mm-hmm. or we're mm-hmm. working with today. I always fold it in half. Like I used to do oh, that okay. as a kid. Um, and I hate it when they put up like a very big paper just to go at it because I work really small. <laughs> so it was like, 
very daunting the very big i just don't like it so i now always uh, fold my papers in half and just <laughs> i don't know yeah. if anyone else has that be like big no, it's also with like the ipad i y- you can get like a big one or a small mm-hmm. one and i was like give me the smallest one <laughs> It's funny because like I, when I sketch, my initial sketches are very small. Mm -hmm. And when I worked with like paper and pencil, I always Mm -hmm. like, I sketch it with colors. I sketch with colored pencil because it's just more fun. Yes. Uh, um, But I'd also do it because when I worked on real paper, Mm -hmm. I would start with a light color and then I'd get like a little dark to refine. And then I would use a just regular like dark pencil to refine the sketch because I didn't do like, I didn't do a tracing paper. And so no, when exactly. you, yeah, so when you scanned it in, if you converted it to black and white and then you messed with the levels, you could get rid of anything yes. that was the sketch. You just get your hard lines. Yes. And I oh, still do I that. Yes. Yeah, I, I still do it digitally, except I use layers, but it's just, it's really good to help me build out yeah. what I'm looking for because then I can get really loose and then I can slowly refine and refine and refine, oh, but I can't so use funny. the tiny iPad. I've no. tried and I can't, yeah. I can't do the tiny one. I, I have the 12.9 and that one works really well for me, but mm-hmm. I still draw okay, like it's... this big. So it's yeah. like, yeah, <laughs> it, it doesn't change that. It's just, I like having the, the, you know, um, I like having the retail space basically to, oh, to, uh, yeah, I can imagine draw easily where I don't feel yeah. like, yeah, I don't feel like my hand's falling off the tablet. Yeah, uh-huh. exactly. Oh, so you're totally different. Yeah. That's, yeah, I, I don't know. I've always drawn very tiny and uh, yeah, like I said, it's very daunting to have so much space and like dots or grid does help me to yeah. categorize it in any sort of way. I never thought about it like this, but it's really what I do. So, okay, so yeah. let me check. I have my days written Monday, out. Monday, uh, Tuesday, it's Wednesday, le- Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You're good. Yeah. Is it like, yeah, spelled correctly? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> the only one I double checked was Wednesday because I can't spell that sometimes and I have to call Wednesday. it Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday. It's just, <laughs> pronouncing it is so weird too. It's, it's like Wednesday. when you write out February, Wednesday. you have to write, you have to oh, say just, February. <laughs> don't get me started. I just, oh, especially as someone who doesn't speak English every day. It's crazy. Oh, I can't. I can't tell you, I, I do, let, I've done lettering for a living for years and I can't tell you how many really? times I've sent things to clients and they're like, oh, this is misspelled. And I'm like, oh no. Well, it happens. Yeah, I did though. I had one where the client was like, it's okay. Cause we could <laughs> fix it and stuff, but it was, the project was in German. Oh I don't speak my gosh. German. No. So, and the way that they'd written it out looked like these two words were one word. Yeah, so I drew it out as one word and they're like, oh, that was completely our mistake. But these are actually <laughs> two words. And I was like, okay, this yes. is easy. And oh, I was like, yeah, I was like, I, I can, don't like feeling like I'm no, dumb. <laughs> I can't imagine. German is so hard. It's it really, um, well, they say it's kind of the same as Dutch, but mm-hmm. it's totally not. <laughs> In no. my opinion, it is kind of, but we're just, we're just, we're neighboring countries. So I can see, but I have learned uh, German in school and uh, I just couldn't get get anything right. It's very yeah. strange. And they use like capital letters at the most random. Oh, I don't know if you n- noticed when you did that no. project, but it's it's very crazy. And they have the longest words, but we do too. They so they it's do. fine. <laughs> yeah. Dutch is a really <laughs> weird language too. Yeah. I will say like, I, I learned Spanish in school and then I did a study abroad for a month in Italy and I did a, um, I listened to like an audio tape to teach myself like very basic Italian, just so I knew how to say like how to get here. Yes. Right. Where's the bathroom and how to order wine. Yes. That's the best way. The thing that was the the nice thing about, um, about Italian is it is very close to Spanish. Mm-hmm. Like the two are are fairly similar. So even if you kind of went back and forth between like Spanish and Italian, they still yes. knew what you were saying. Yes, true. Because I definitely had that happen a few times. Oh, that's, oh yeah, I can imagine. But listening to it is is the best way to learn, I think. Yeah. Because and when I was, thing. yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, I w- wanted to say when I was little, we um, watched like shows uh, like Saved by the Bell and Sabrina oh, the yeah. Teenage Witch. Um, but 
today uh, everything is dubbed so everything is like oh, okay. voiced over by dutch people and uh i think that's very unfortunate because i really yeah. learned my english that way and uh yeah. it's it's very important just to listen to it and and the, you just know how people say it but yeah mm -hmm. kids today have youtube too and everything so yeah. i i bet they'll be fine but <laughs> that those are good shows to learn too though yes i really miss it, it. <laughs> The one good thing too, when I was, when I was over in Italy too, was like, like they all speaking, oh, not all of them, but a lot of them, especially in like Rome proper speak English. Yes. The big so, cities. Yeah. So you didn't really have to worry if you didn't know it, but they really loved when you tried. Oh yeah. I bet like they if do. You, yeah. Yeah. Cause I always tried to make, I always tried to make the effort to at least try to speak at least a little bit in Italian. I was like, I don't know a lot. Yeah but yeah. I'm trying and they were always so kind. They'd help me through words. They'd help me through sentences. Oh, and then so I, nice. and then I had, and then I had one incident where not an incident, but I had one experience where I ended up going to a pizzeria and we were all exhausted. So, um, we went to go order pizza and, and we're just like, mm -hmm. uh, and just trying to point to a piece of pizza. And the guy looks at us and he goes, you can speak English to me. I'm from Chicago. And like, with the X, <laughs> with the, with the full Chicago oh, accent, so like cool. <laughs> he goes, you can speak English to me. I'm from Chicago. And we got also, all of us just got to talk. And we're like, what? Oh my he's God. Like, yeah. And he's like, and we're like, how did you end up here? He goes, well, I did some things and stuff and I just <laughs> sort of had an opportunity and I took it. Oh, and, he, and he's so like, funny. yeah. And he goes, but God, would I what I would give for a good old Chicago hot dog. And I'm just like, oh <laughs> my Lord, like probably the funniest oh, thing to happen over there. What are the odds? Um, That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Val has a couple questions. Oh God, that's like, oh my God, that's funny. It was, it took us a moment to actually register that he was speaking yeah, English like to us. What? <laughs> Cause it literally, just, you can speak English to me. I'm from Chicago. And I was like, what? <laughs> Oh, three of us so just nice. like our yeah. eyes just got big and we were just silent and he's like I I'm, I'm from Chicago I speak I speak English. Yeah. you're fine I was like <laughs> oh, oh my god, god. um oh. so Val would like to know can you share some stories you have about difficult clients and how you solved those problems and the lessons you learned oh wow so that's a good one that's a loaded question yes I well, I, like I said, I have been very lucky. I have been working with very lovely people for the most part. Uh, so I'll have to think about that. Like I have some inconveniences, like people who say uh, they want one thing and they at the end want another thing and that you'll have to adjust and uh, like discuss everything over and over. But like really bad clients, I don't know. But I think it's always important to just Stay as professional as you can and just try to solve it. Um, but also know your boundaries. Like mm -hmm. when you just, some people just want you to work in the weekends and just don't acknowledge that you also have to have some free time. <laughs> and it's very important to just say, so like, um, you know, I'm on my weekend now. So <laughs> I'll, yes, I'll talk to you on Monday if that's okay. But like be always be respectful i guess yeah uh, but luckily i haven't had any very bad no i I, I can't yeah but yeah you can yeah i'm sure you've had experiences that you probably can't share but yeah well i have to think about those really uh, yes no i i, I can't one really, out of the top like, of my head i don't know have you had yeah. any i had one really bad client but just one Oh. And because everyone else has been really respectful and I learned how to set boundaries and my whole thing mm -hmm. was just like, if I have to work on the weekend, it's going to cost extra, yes. you know, but generally if I'm going to work on the weekend, it's on my own terms. Yes. And, um, okay. Yeah. But I had one that like, I was hired as the illustrator. I had a, it was really early in my career and they, the person that hired me ended up like the it was like a guy that had hired me for it wasn't getting things done but he was sending mm. like edit like edit after edit after edit but never like in a group it was like one edit at a time oh my gosh and yes. so I I went beyond the allotted edits for this project within mm -hmm. like a day um and he 
then like, because it wasn't getting done fast enough, the owner's wife, who I guess was like a co-owner took over and she was like, oh yeah, since she goes, this needs to get done. So I'm taking over. And then I ended up on a three-way call where I couldn't hear him because he was mumbling. And every time I tried to ask something, oh, she cut no. me off. And then she messaged me privately afterwards. and was like, can you give me a call back when you get a chance? I've got a question. And she's like, you should know that you sounded angry on the phone. And as the designer, you're required to work until, um, oh my god, until we are happy. And I was like, oh, well done, what? <laughs> um, oh. And then she proceeded to call me 16 times in under 12 oh. hours. That's Eventually, wild. my agent at the time finally said, I gave my agent at the time finally a heads up because I was like, this is going on. I don't know how to handle this, and she's scaring me. Yes, <laughs> and oh so finally, the agent stepped in, was like lady you gotta stop this yes. is this is one this is not what how it is she's not your designer she is hired as an illustrator she's gone above and beyond and then like the lady threatened not to pay um, oh God, and my agent was worse. like yeah that's not how this works she did all no. the work everything was approved you're paying so it was yes. but that thankfully has been my only nightmare client oh that's great and thankfully you had an agent because yes otherwise you just have to do everything yourself it's like it's, it's, it's nice terrifying. to have someone standing up for you. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and that per, the agent at the time too, they, they were in my corner and they're just like, listen, if anything like that ever happens again, yes. let us know ASAP and we will take, we'll step in and get it taken care of quickly. Cause oh, that's great. You, you should not have to deal with that. But it also taught, no. like, I got to see how to handle something like that. So I was able to get a little more brave with how I interacted with clients. Yeah. You learn um, from it. Right. It's like, yeah, you don't want it to happen again. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, and it is, it's all a learning experience, but oh, yes, was it a, that was, oh, that, was God. A, that was a doozy. No, I, doozy. I can imagine. I don't like, like confronting people or anything mm -hmm. in real like life no. either. No, same. Yeah. And uh, yeah, sometimes it's very hard as, as an, as a freelancer to do everything like your email mm -hmm. and your finances and be your own agent or your own, you know, it's, yeah. it's so much. <laughs> And it sometimes I forget that it's not only illustrating, it's also like communicating and back and mm -hmm. forth and just goes on. And uh, yeah. I tend to forget that, but oh, well, it's yeah. very ironic while I place my don't forget sign. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We have um, Kevin wants to know, why do you write the words in Photoshop instead of Illustrator? Well, I do that because I really like the, like I said in the beginning, the uh organic is, is it like organic can you say that feeling on yeah. a brush and in illustrator it's uh like very um yeah it's it's a vector based uh software so it's very nice if you have to make things that have to be blown up very big or like resized very small and i tend to use uh illustrator only for logos and everything because you need to use that in every size possible um, but since I know the file will only be used at A4 in this case, I can use Photoshop as much as I want. And I have the freedom to choose brushes and uh, textures. That's also a very important thing. That's uh, something you can do in Illustrator, but is uh, a bit more difficult, I find. So I think this is uh, very nice and uh, just feels more, yeah, I don't know, feels nicer. <laughs> So yeah. that's why it's, it's hard to translate textures into, into illustrator too. Yes, it like is. It's, yeah. It's global, but it's very hard. Yeah. It's not really, um, well, it's, yeah, you can do it, but it's not used for that basically. Yeah. So yeah. Like it's, and, it's hard. Yeah. Yes. True. And basically all the illustrators I know, well, unless you're a vector artist, um, basically use Photoshop for these things and I have yeah. used Photoshop for years and years now like I said since I was 11 I was building websites and I was doing everything in Photoshop so I I am self-taught basically <laughs> so I do the things that I know but uh mm -hmm. okay so I have placed my little frame like that, that makes sense though because you end up finding a workflow that works yes and true. to switch it up really does 
cause you to slow down. You're just like, I'm going to use what I know works. Yes. True. Until I, you know, don't have, you know, until I have to do something different. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's very important that you just say true to yourself. Like uh, we were talking about earlier, I can like export everything very uh, nicely to different uh, PNG files and then import it into this. But I find this works very, very well. So I'm just going to copy and paste. Uh, yeah. And I think that's a great feature from Adobe that it's it translates so well with every type of software. It's just, it's like it's you're working in one program it's crazy so really yeah. nice let me see what and, I have to add and I know a lot of times I don't know about you but I know when I, I've worked with clients sometimes they'll ask for like a vector file not realizing that I don't work in vectors but mm -hmm. they say it because that's just what they know like they don't yes. realize that you can do it in a different program and it will still work because you really if you're not if you're doing like a spot illustration, you don't need it in a vector format. No, exactly. Oh, I have the complete opposite. People I work with don't know what vectors are. Oh, they okay. just know that I draw and sometimes they don't even realize that I draw digitally. <laughs> so mm -hmm. It's very cute, but uh, sometimes I will really have to explain yeah. like how things work. And if you have a logo, you have different types of files because I had a client once that said, why did you send this to me like five times and i was like everything oh, no. li every little thing is different and you can use yeah. this for that and the 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 png files are for on your instagram and it was very cute yeah. and sometimes it just goes like that and i yeah i can imagine not everyone is that digitally orientated uh, especially like the the older generations i really have to explain and yeah that's it's fine. I mean, not everyone knows everything about their digital things and the, yeah. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's what we're there for. We're there to explain it and to make it easier. Exactly. <laughs> but it's very funny. Like uh, when someone really doesn't know anything, I, I'm happy to explain because like I said, it's also my passion to design and everything. And I'm very excited yeah. to, it was also like my grandma always wanted to know what I did and, um, maybe you have this too but explaining this to someone it's she always wanted to see me work and then she was like, oh it's yeah. just like magic <laughs> it was very I, cute I, one of the places i used to work i had to do photo editing and i'd use a wacom like an intuos tablet yeah because i just didn't have as much control with the mouse to cut things out no and i had coworkers that walk in and they're like i'd be working they're like we just like watching you work on your magic tablet. Magic tablet. <laughs> they just call it, yeah, they called it my magic tablet. And yes. I was like, okay, we'll run with this. It's yes. fine. Mm -hmm. um, I help my dad with like photo editing too, because he'll have, he'll come in with photos. And he's like, I need you to like, his camera has a weird spot on it that just will not yeah. go away. <laughs> and he's like, I like, he goes, I won't get a new camera because this one does F stops more than like, does a wider mm. range of them. So I have more control over things, but I've tried sending off for cleaning and they can't seem to figure out where the spot is. Oh, yeah. So every time he has photos, he, I, he'll come in, he'll hand me all the photos and I'll start photo. And he just sits there and goes, <laughs> okay. you are so good. Oh, that's I'm so like, cute. <laughs> I'm like, you're making me feel great, but this is just the automatic clone tool. Like Photoshop is doing all the work here. Like, oh, yes. I'm not as good. I'm, I'm not as good as you're making me out to be, but I will take the praise. <laughs> yes. You're so good. Yeah. Oh God. That's so familiar. Yeah. We, um, at my job, I'm like the photographer too, like uh, what, what I told you about the jewelry shop. So mm -hmm. um, I take pictures and I, I do like the, the branding, like the illustrations. I, I really draw very many stars, for example. So I'm always drawing stars because that fits uh, the aesthetic. Um, yeah. But I also do like, yeah, I do have to edit loads of pictures and um what we do for pictures, we always have like black nails and very much of many rings and it's very nice, but some people just can't um, uh, do their nail polish very neatly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like my boss uh, sometimes models and she's oh. every time she was like, just can you Photoshop it because I'm really bad at this and I'm like, oh. I will do that. I really like like nitpicking at every little detail. So um, what I yes really so fun. when i was done yes <laughs> so when i was done with uh, a picture i i used to send the before and after and she was like 
Wow. <laughs> I, I, that's so, one of my so favorite funny. things to do is to like I'll, <laughs> yes. I'll put the oh, all the edits in their own folder and I'm like look yes. what before after after before, <laughs> after <laughs> I could do that all day it's so yeah. satisfying <laughs> it really is yes um, um it's not that difficult either it's like really no. the, the tools right it's oh but it's so nice so much of it too is more so just like having a good eye for finding what needs to be edited without over editing yes. it true yeah it's very like I have hard to, I have to edit like photos of teeth my dad's a dentist um oh, so right. I have yeah. I have seen a lot of teeth oh, and sometimes like the way that they try to take it they try to take it to where they've dried off in dry this is I hope people aren't grossed out they, they've dried off the no, gums so it fine. doesn't reflect yeah. And sometimes it just doesn't work. So you have to like go in and tone down the reflections without yeah. making it look like it's been Photoshopped and without yeah. making it look like it's been edited or doesn't look real. And um, so it's like, you're very, you have to be very, very conservative about yes. the edits you do, but mm -hmm. still make it look good. Yeah. Don't overdo it. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like just enough to, to just make it look just a step better. Yeah. Um, but it is very, it's, it's very hard. It, it's, it takes a, a very trained eye to yes. know when to quit. True. Yeah. That's exactly what I do with uh, like the jewelry. It's, it's, you don't want to overdo it because yeah, sometimes in my case, the nail polish really reflects and oh, yeah. uh, it has like blue tones in it and I have to delete that. But when I do it, it looks really fake. So yeah. it's, like, it's so it's such a little detail, but I can I really have to pay attention to when to stop and <laughs> what and not what to do and what not to do. Um, yeah. It's crazy. I have also also made some pictures um, last month on like a, a plastic um, type of plate. And when I took okay. the pictures, the lens was so precise that it took up all the dust particles. So I had to no. edit it out, like every... <laughs> And it were like so many photos, but it made such yeah. a difference. In the end, it was worth it, but it's, oh, it's such tedious work. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like nice. the things, other people don't even see it. Like, uh, but when I show them the before, it's like, whoa, that's a lot of work. And yeah. Yeah. And then they, and then they're like, okay, I get it now. I appreciate yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they like, do, do appreciate me, luckily. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. But in that case, the before and afters were very nice too. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's always, it's just fun to do that because it's like I'm gonna impress mm -hmm. you. Bum, bum. Yep. And, oh, um, so satisfying. They uh, So Val had another question. Um, yes. This is actually a really good one. She said, uh, "Silvana and Shauna, can you tell us about a recent project that you're very proud of?" Well, yeah, I, I basically showed you the one in my portfolio that I'm very proud of. It's uh, I can maybe grab it if now. Well, well, it's it's too far away, but it's the book. Uh, okay. And I'm I'm very happy with how it turned out because I always wanted to do uh, one, a book cover and uh, the illustrations for the inside. But another goal of mine was to incorporate like the gold lining, if you know what I mean. Mm, like gold leaf? Gold leaf. Yeah, it's not gold. Yeah. It's not real gold, but it's golden okay. details. And it's so okay. cool uh, because I got to do that and it's all around the book. And uh, maybe I'll get to it if I can stand up. But um, if yeah, not, that's... I'll remind you to grab it tomorrow. And we can tomorrow, right? Yeah. I'll, yeah, I will show you it in the stream. I can show you a little bit more detail, but... Um, I got to design the, the inside uh, along with another um, graphic designer and uh, decide on everything. And it, I got so much freedom and it was so cool to do. And uh, yeah, so it really became uh, one of my passion projects, but I got paid really. <laughs> so that's really Which is cool. a bonus, really. <laughs> yes. And how about you? Um, my most recent that I am very proud of is a book cover that oh. is it's not just the book cover it's it's actually an entire children's book but the book cover had to be done because it's a board book where this layers it stacks in a way that like all the yes. pieces together make one scene oh that's so cool and this is the first um 
it's the first kids book I've ever done. Mm -hmm. And so I was, I was thrown into the deep end, but it's been a great experience. Um, But I finally got to see it like, like mocked up online. Cause what I sent wasn't like, Mm -hmm. it was what I could figure out, but I couldn't figure out the remainder of it. Oh my and gosh, so, Shuri, your dog is walking down. Oh yeah, he's just, so cute. <laughs> yeah, he's just, he, hi buddy. Oh, yeah, he, he sorry to inter- interrupt. <laughs> oh no, you're fine. He's got, he can't jump down the book. It's a no. bed and it's too high. And if he oh, jumped, he hurt gosh. himself. So he's got stairs. <laughs> um, but the, the book just went live for pre-orders. And so oh, I got to see so like cool. how they put the cover together. And I was just like, oh my God. <gasps> oh, that's so and, exciting. And my current agent's really happy with how it turned out as well. Oh, um, that's so nice. I'm very yeah. curious to see it because like the layers and everything just make it complete it's or really, yeah. Yeah, yeah oh, it's really, so really nice. interesting. It's called The Monsters on the Broom. Oh, yeah. Very nice. So will, and your I'll first you. one also, that's like quite the yeah. project for a first children's book, right? Yeah, I, I got very excited and very lucky I have a um children's book agent who was like oh, they wow. wanted you so here you go I was like oh god that's so um, cool yeah so I'm, I'm very excited about that so the next like two weeks are actually finishing all the spreads to send to finals oh that's cool yeah I was wondering is it finished already or you nope. so you just have to do the last things yeah, I've got three spreads due the 17th and then the following week, the other three. But on those following three, we're still waiting on like an additional edit that approval. Mm-hmm. So it might get yeah. extended a little bit. Yes. But what are you doing, buddy? Oh, he's no. tap he's tap dancing for his, his cookie jar. Oh uh, my gosh. He's, oh. he's something. Uh, Kevin says that they are also self-taught and they thought they were doing things differently from others but that's what makes them unique as a designer that's so true yeah it really is yeah um, it really is yeah and Val's really interested in your product photography she's like I've never done product photography like that before oh really oh that's so yeah it's it's very yeah. specific <laughs> yeah it was I, I don't usually do the product photography I'm more of the yeah how do you say that like I do the shoots with the models and um, it's so much fun, but I, uh, it's it's our goal in, in the company when uh, the pro- product photographer is on holiday that I can fill her, uh, up her tasks and she can do mine. So uh, we have to uh, be prepared to do uh, both. So that's why uh, sometimes I do the pro- product photography and it's very, very small jewelry. It's just uh, like the, the okay. ear, the yeah. earring pieces. Like earring I don't studs. Know. Yes, exactly. So it's very yeah. zoomed in and everything. So oh, that's okay. why. But I, yeah, you, if you if you're interested, I, it's a very Dutch word. I I can't. <laughs> it's visvarsjes. Okay. So good luck with that. No, it's uh, I. You can maybe find some on my Instagram. Okay. I, I sometimes link them because, uh, well, like I said, I work there three times a day, uh, a day, a week, and. Um, yeah, it's it's really nice to work there, and I always tag them in my Instagram stories, and uh, they have the prettiest jewelry. So yeah, I will I will find it. I just hopped onto your Instagram. Yes, uh, I can spell it out too because I don't know if it's very recent. Um, oh, and I'm getting requests for doggo cam. People want to see doggo cam. Hang on. <laughs> you got it. You cool if I bring the dog on? <laughs> yeah. All right, come here, buddy. I love me some dogs. Come on there. And we have a teddy bear. Hi, Teddy. Oh, look at him. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hello, Makes me miss my dog. What we, kind of dog? We have an Australian Shepherd. Oh, but, cute. But the mini version. Okay. So it isn't that big. It's a fairly known breed in uh, America, um, yeah, but not in Europe. I, I I bet you know what I'm talking about. But uh, there are I have so a many that has people. Two. Oh, that's so cool! I don't know anyone yeah. who has one, so it's very uh, yeah. People are very confused when they see it. They know like the Australian Shepherd, but they are like, but is he still a puppy? And I'm like, no, he's two years old. Oh, but he's so tiny. It's always the same conversation. <laughs> yeah, but that's the reason. It's just a little 
a little smaller and he's uh he's, he's like the blue merle with the blue eyes so he's uh yeah a real sh oh. showstopper <laughs> yeah oh i love that oh yeah um so val found the website oh really these are i love the photography i like the black polish that's really um oh thank you it's it's very like chic yes we try to um uh really make it unique there are not really many um web shops who do it like us and that's our goal there are people yeah. who imitate us <laughs> which is oh, okay. really annoying but yeah it's just it happens um yeah we try to see it as a compliment but we really try to yeah figure out new ways to make the pictures and uh yeah try to make it as unique as it can be but it's, yeah. it's so impressive that she <laughs> that she found it how did she I know, find I'm it? I'm impressed. <laughs> yes. She goes, Kevin found it. I just made the oh, link yes. clickable. Yeah, Kevin is go. Dutch, so <laughs> he knows how yeah. to spell it. And this one, he people are in chat going, Doggo. No. He, this one just turned 10. So 10 years. Oh my god. Yeah, gosh. he is he is 10 years old. Well, we, we think he is. He was a rescue. It was about a year and a half when I got him. So yes. Oh, based so on how long I've had him he's we think he's about 10 years old he may be a little younger a little older but well he doesn't look like it no he's still got <laughs> a puppy face and he acts like a puppy so put you down. are you mad yeah you're mad all right <laughs> he said I did my job yes going to go right. now Aww. all right here we'll get you a snack and let me see I don't know if this will fit If you want a snack, buddy, you gotta look cute on camera, and then you can enjoy it. <laughs> then you can have your snack. Yeah, and then you can enjoy it. Um, <laughs> let's see. So we've got about twenty, yeah, twenty minutes left before we have to start wrapping up for the day. Yes, it has gone by so quickly. It's crazy. I know, but this is so fun. Well, oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I haven't gone on around to the illustrations yet, but um, I'm planning on doing that uh, tomorrow. Okay. And um, well, I had like a plan for maybe three planners in total, like a to-do list. And uh, but the, the beginning is always the most like as having to set up everything. So I think maybe tomorrow we will uh, go over to a daily planner which will be very fun. So I will make a set of three and in the end, uh, I will make them downloadable on my website so you can download them and use them. So I'm very excited for that. Um, let me see. That'll be fun. Um, oh, so Val has a great question. Val says, what sort of things are you keeping in mind as you go along in your process? Hmm. Well, this process isn't one that I use very often, or how do you say that? I don't work in this type of way very often, but okay. what I keep in mind when I um, make illustrations in Photoshop, which is very important to me, um, it's also a question I get a lot, is like, what size do you work in uh, since Photoshop is a uh, pixel-based Mm -hmm. software you have to keep in mind how big you work or how small yeah. um so what i tend to do when i start a uh or i open up a new file is like i make the file twice as big as the size that i want it to be intentionally uh just so i can resize it a bit so i tend to work like very big and i can always like make it smaller because it's harder yes. to make it bigger <laughs> So that's someone, something that I always keep in mind and that's very important because I have had multiple uh, occasions where I was like, oh shoot, I can't make this any bigger than it already is and now I'm, well, I have to start over or anything yeah. like that. So that's something. Um, and yeah, I normally I just go with the flow. Like that's basically yeah. <laughs> what I do. I'll have to think of that. Yeah, I will say though, like Photoshop has gotten better about like enlarging <clears throat> things. 
obviously yes. you can't take something that's like this big and make no, it. exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But if you have like a, an, an illustration and you need to en- enlarge it, maybe like one time, if it's like a mm-hmm. small to like, you know, a couple inches, yes. um, it does actually like translate it pretty well. So yes, I figured that. Yeah. It's, it hasn't gotten so much better. Yeah. It's yeah. just sometimes just in case because I have had uh, some projects where someone was like oh I want to use this on a banner and I was like oh no oh but yes ah it's just not possible and they wouldn't understand why and then then I showed like when I make it very big for example uh, so that's when I started to just like make some things a little bit bigger just in case Um, but it's very nice that you don't have to pay attention to that very yeah, it's it's nice because it, when you just make it too little, you can't go back. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let me see. I'm just duplicating these. All right. I think these are the last ones. Let me check. Do I have anything left? No, okay. So I think... This is the, um, well, the base of the planner. And now we get to decorate it, which is very fun. Um, Like I said at the beginning, I left very much room (laughs) for um, notes because I am someone who likes to write everything everywhere just to to not forget anything. Um, But in this weekly view, I really like the fact that you can also use the weekends. But because I don't know... um, if you also have this, but as a freelancer, I sometimes have to work in the weekends and yeah. some planners just leave very little room for those days. So I really like uh, just to be able to plan out everything in my weekends. Um, and we have a don't forget uh, column just because that's very important. And I have put up the bullet points just because I really like them, but I would love to hear from the chat if they uh, agree on on the point that my friend made like when you write really big you have to jump up uh, on the next line does it bother you do I have to keep those in or I don't know yeah I threw a question in chat we'll find out oh I'm very curious um, to see <laughs> yeah if you still have chat open uh someone named Vanessa is very excited to see you and I don't want to butcher the language oh shoot I'm, well I'm my pretty sure she wrote in Dutch maybe I can pick up my phone <laughs> <laughs> i would love to hear you try though ah <laughs> uh, i can give it a shot uh i may have butchered big time oh um, let me see yeah oh my gosh you i i just translated what you said lang niet gezien that was means... i close <laughs> <laughs> well, I I could understand you. Yeah. I don't know what you said exactly, but it's long niet gezien and it means long time no see. It kind oh, of cute. sounds like it, right? Long niet gezien. Hi, Vanessa. Oh, that's I so cool. To, back in high school, I took choir and we had to learn to sing in different languages. So I have like little bits mm-hmm. here and there that I like. I had to learn to sing in German once and Russian, oh, um, so cool. French, Italian. Yes. Um, oh, that's and crazy. like the Russian song I remember was, it was about a duck splashing in the rain. That's Aww. all I remember. <laughs> that's um, so cute. And it's funny because I still remember the tune. I don't remember all the words, but I remember the tune. Mm-hmm. And then um, the one about, the one in German was about like, I know that you, it was basically like, I know you love me, but you'll never have me type of thing. Um, oh, really like a playing hard to get type thing yeah yeah, yeah. uh oh, french so i'm pretty funny. sure french was just the um was just Elena, so that christmas mm-hmm. song yeah, um, yeah yeah i know that and then one. italian italian was like pretty much every other song we did if it wasn't in english because we had a book of 24 italian songs and arias mm-hmm. oh um, that's so cool yeah and the first one you learn is caro mio ben and i cannot stand oh wow <laughs> It's just, it's one of those, it's just so, it's so just da, mm-hmm. da, da, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think you know and, which uh, one, I know which one you mean, yeah. 
Oh, it's cool that you got to learn in different languages because I'm curious in America you learn like uh, Spanish, right? Yeah, so my high school, I got to start a <clears throat> language in middle school. So I was about Okay, yeah, yeah. How old was I? It was 7th grade. It was the year before 9/11, 99 to 2000. Yes. Um, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. I uh, got to take a Spanish class. Mm -hmm. So that was my first introduction to Spanish. Yes. And then I took it, I took another Spanish class in eighth grade and it was, and then all through um, high school. So I had about six years of Spanish. Oh, yes. And it's quite a long I, time. Yeah. And, and I grew up in Florida. So if you were mm -hmm. to learn a language, that was the one to learn because there's a huge Hispanic population yes. there, especially if you go to Miami, everything is Spanish first than English. Mm -hmm. And oh, um, really. Yeah, and then and and Spanish is a very very common language here in the mm -hmm. states, so it makes sense to to know it. Yeah, um, true. And so, but in my in my high school, the options you had for your second your language course were Spanish, French, or Latin. Latin, yes. Latin. Wow. I'm not sure why Latin, but Latin. No. Um. So, like, I had some girlfriends who took who took French and one ultimately actually did live in France for a while. And she was an all pair. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So she, and she knows French by heart. Her husband is uh, oh, French. So nice. And so she knows all the, all the word, you know, she's very, very fluent. Um, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I, I got to be a little bit conversational with Spanish and I was uh, in New York last week week and my client was a, a Madrid based company. Mm -hmm. Um, and they were in New York. So they all were talking in Spanish around me. And I was like, oh, wow, <laughs> I don't like, I kind of understood some of what was going on. And then it was like context clues. I could figure out what, yeah. what they were talking about. Um, but at one point they were talking, I kept hearing Pikachu and I'm like, are you guys, <laughs> are you guys talking about Pokemon? Like, and the, the one guy looks at me, he goes, it was my, it was my 33rd birthday. And I have Pikachu balloon oh. and his this and that guy's kid loves Pikachu and he wants my balloon. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah, everyone um, knows Pikachu, right? Yeah, it's it's so funny. Like you hear, you know, you'll hear someone speaking a completely different language, but you'll hear yes. these random words that you're like, oh, I know hey, that. I know that. <laughs> I have I've got a that's friend so who funny. she knows um she's fluent in Chinese. Wow. And her husband, she and her husband both lived in Beijing. So he is also fluent, but he is also someone you wouldn't expect to be fluent. He's a very tall yes. white dude. He's oh, a very yes. tall white dude. So you would never look at him and say, that guy knows fluent Chinese. No. But he exactly. does. So it's <laughs> and a very big surprise. <laughs> yeah. And she and she and, and him are teaching their daughter how to speak Chinese as well. Oh wow. And so, oh. but she's like, it's she's it's amazing because his his um you can't tell that he's not he wasn't a native speaker no she really goes, his accent and his everything is very good oh that's but amazing she used to, like she'd get on her phone on the phone with her mom and her mom and her would go back and forth and so she'd be doing she'd like bounce between chinese and english oh and, wow yeah but there was one day where the three of us were at epcot and she's sitting there she's on the phone with her mom she's talking in, in chinese and i glance at him and he just breaks out in this huge smile like this <laughs> a very mischievous like Oh yeah, I know what she said. Smile, and she looked at him and smacked him. And she goes, "Forgot you understand what I'm saying." <laughs> I was like, you oh yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But oh, yeah. can't imagine speaking another language than your partner. That's... Yeah, it's it was really really interesting. Like it's mm -hmm. it's really fun to see that the two of them can. You know, yeah. they can converse in both English and Chinese. Yes, oh, that's um, so funny. I really like when people um, are trying out new languages or learning new languages because mm -hmm. in the Netherlands it's very mandatory that everyone knows English. We are oh, okay. basically uh, very known for being good English speakers. Um, so everyone expects us to speak their language or English. Oh. And we as Dutch people, we always have to, uh, we, we have to learn English uh, either way. So that's yeah. all throughout school from beginning to end, basically. Um, okay. But also French, German, you can learn Spanish, um, Latin too, which okay. is very, I don't know, it's mostly when you're uh, higher up 
uh, you mm -hmm. get the those languages. But um, yeah, we we basically have to learn a bit of we're we're expected to learn a bit of um, German and a little bit of French. So when we are in um, uh, France, they are they just won't speak English with you. They just know okay. that you're Dutch and you'll have to try or any. <laughs> They're very. It's crazy. It's yeah. Oh, they are very known to just talk French. I don't know. Yeah. They just have... won't. It's mostly the older generations because the newer generations, they, they learn English through social media and everything, but the older oh, generations okay. just won't. <laughs> yeah. So it's very funny. I have a, I have an uncle who is, um, I actually, I think he is Dutch actually. Oh, really? Um, yeah. It's, it's friends who are, who we consider family. Oh yeah. And yeah. So I've grown up, I, he's known me since I was like five and I just saw him yeah, a couple yeah. weeks ago. Um, but he lived, he and he and my aunt lived in St. Martin mm -hmm. um, in the Caribbean. And so obviously, you know, French, half the island is French, half the island yes. is Dutch. Yes, He can it speak is. both languages and, um, and it, but it's like, I've never heard him. I don't think I've ever actually heard him speak Dutch or French unless mm -hmm. he's like talking about a certain thing. And he says like the name of it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Oh, but he has to just speak another language uh, next to English. It's so fascinating when people can talk like so many different it's I crazy i have people here who uh when i moved to chicago there's a, a very big um ukrainian and polish population here oh yes and, mm -hmm. and that is my heritage i am polish and ukrainian oh, really oh that's so interesting yeah. cool and i know five words five words <laughs> five words that's yeah it. but it's, it's a and very different language uh, i think I, I, yeah very hard to learn it is we we didn't realize too that my my grandma could speak fluent polish until she was in the nursing home oh really and then they're yes. like yeah and like had i known that all my you know had i known that i would have like had her teach me over the phone my whole life but yes yeah she, um, but apparently she they the nurses at the nursing home would send us like pictures and updates and they're like oh, oh and she's speaking polish to the other residents and we go what what <laughs> Wait, <Since when>? <laughs> oh wow yeah. she's fluent. she was completely fluent we're just like we had no idea oh wow um, is she the first generation to move there or she i think was i want to say she was born in poland so she yeah. moved there and then my grandfather was ukrainian studied medicine in the ukraine and then yes. came over here yeah and brought ukrainian techniques to medicine so he could do an appendectomy in six minutes oh wow um, which was a huge yes huge thing. um so my dad and uncle were the first generation yes. from that from that line here and so my sister and i i believe our second generation oh that's so cool yeah and then of yeah, course my and mm -hmm. oh go ahead no I, just go ahead <laughs> I was just, I just and I just have like I've extended family on like my my grandma's side who they were all I'm I have to I should find out if like they all can speak Polish because that's something I definitely <laughs> have never thought to actually consider asking and I have an uncle still around as well as yes. like a small handful of her siblings still around oh that's so cool yeah that happens a lot in in America right like uh, families who just um how, how do you say it? migrated to immigrated immigrated, immigrated to yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and um they're just from all over the world in america it's so cool to see yeah it's i mean it truly is a melting pot here yeah so true yeah in, um, in the netherlands too but my family is just dutch <laughs> oh yeah that's fun though um Kevin says, I love the fire, the Phoenix Fest brand you did. Oh, thank you. That was, that was all Courtney. She did a great job. Um, <laughs> let's see. I'm what are the doing... opinions on the bullet points? Should I? Oh, get yes. Rid of I them? did see. We have those. So we have, uh, I, someone said, Laura says, I agree with your friend. I prefer the freedom of writing whatever size you want. Right. Yeah. Um, Kevin says, remove every second bullet points. So you can write two lines. That's also a great idea. And then like this. Louisa said I would consider check boxes. Oh, that's also nice. 
and then the chat diverted because Val told me she knows every word to Caro Mio Ben and I had no idea that she'd taught voice <laughs> lessons. So now we're reminiscing. Um, nice. <laughs> and uh and we so we've got about five minutes left. We'll wrap yes. up in about we'll start wrapping up in about three-ish. That's so you've great. got a few more minutes. Um and Vanessa says, do you also make digital planners with clickable links in InDesign? No, I I don't, but I'm very fascinated by the fact that that's possible because I know I have made um, like clickable things in InDesign in school, um, but I figured it would be very much fun to do this with uh, this type of planner too, but I, I'm not going to do that in this uh, live stream, uh, but it's it's something that I want to look into because I think it would be very fun to make this clickable. It's a great yeah. idea. But I'll have what to look into things? that. Yeah, maybe like clickable, like you could you could click off like the the yeah exactly and stuff. Yes, and you also have the options to I, I guess to make like tabs and uh, switch over to another tab, oh, but I don't okay. know for sure. Um, yeah. I have seen those, so that's also very cool. I know, like people will sell things like this on Etsy, and they'll import it into like Good Notes to use yes, their yeah, planner page. Yeah, that's so crazy. It's a whole business. <laughs> I have so looked sick. up Etsy things for um, for like inspiration. I came across the wildest things. It's so crazy. It's because, something for everybody. <laughs> right? Yes. And it's so cool because digi digital planners are such a thing right now. But I I was craving for something on my desk, uh, yeah. which is, isn't hiding behind all the tabs and all the... I, I lose track of all my notes. Uh, so I was really uh, craving something that I could write on. So that's the reason yeah. that I'm making these printables. Um but I'm thinking of making them into real like notebooks or notepads just because I think it would be very much fun. Uh, but the shipping is horrible, especially to America. Oh, so yeah. I figured um, making these printables think... would be nice too. You could, I mean, you could look at licensing to American companies. Oh, what, what do you mean? Like, so um, like if you found a company that specialized oh, yes. in stationery or something <clears throat> you could license the design they take care of all the printing and you get yeah. a royalty yeah i've been thinking about that yeah, maybe that's which, a good idea it, it wouldn't be a bad idea to to you no. know consider especially because this is so cute oh thank you yeah i think that's a great yeah. idea actually because i was thinking about um well shipping them myself but it's the rates have gone up so much and it's, shipping is so slow right now. It is, yes. I just don't want to do that to, to anyone, to customers. So maybe that's a great idea, licensing, yeah. So just so you can get your own notepad in America, but I don't have to worry about getting it there. Yeah. <laughs> so let me see. So I, I just finished in two hours. I'm very happy that this one is done right now. And I'm very excited for tomorrow so for making fun. another two. So I really hope um, that the people in the chat are sticking out. Well, not sticking around until tomorrow, but <laughs> coming yeah. back tomorrow because I would love that. I'm sure they will. Yeah, Vanessa says, uh, clickable links on tabs. Yes, I've made it, but not in InDesign. So I'm curious to make one in InDesign. All right, yes. Um, and then, and we still have like another minute before I actually have to have to. Uh, oh, great. Then I'll just organize everything for tomorrow yeah. because... I was thinking of, uh, I have this lady over here and I'm thinking of um, putting her in some clothes tomorrow and I okay. thought it would be fun to do that together with the chat. So I uh, will have to figure out the color of her hair and everything. So mm -hmm. tomorrow we're going to, um, yeah, focus a little bit more on illustration maybe. Uh, I have these flowers. I am thinking of making a pattern because over here I have um, tried a different I thing. with that different colors so I think it will be much fun too um, because making patterns is always a tedious thing too and uh, maybe uh, I thought I'd show you how I would do that yeah and maybe we can incorporate that in um, in the notebooks of tomorrow I love those and, that uh, pattern would be a cute like um, planner end page 
Yeah, for example, and maybe I thought I could make a little mock-up yeah. of a notebook, like with a cover and everything. And maybe I'm yeah. really looking forward to uh, seeing this as a set because I really love when things match. So, <laughs> yeah, well, and a lot of those could become stickers. Yes, that that's another thing. I have a Cricut machine, so I'm yes. definitely <laughs> going to make stickers. Uh, that won't be for the live stream, but you can always keep up uh, with me on Instagram and I will definitely make this. I have so many requests of, will you make these into stickers because they are so cute? So yeah, I will definitely do Good. that. <laughs> Good. Yeah, having a, having a cricket is both wonderful and absolutely dangerous. <gasps> yes. I, another business, oof. right? <laughs> yes. I, I made so many stickers last year. Oh my oh, God. Me too. Me too. Well, it looks like it is time for us to wrap up. Yes. Solana, it's been so fun having you with us. Yes. Same. And it's been so fun watching your process. I loved it. I love seeing how you take things from Photoshop, putting them in InDesign, how you organize, how you think through your process. I loved the engagement with the chat. Yes, so me too. thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Yes. And same. We'll be back tomorrow, everyone, tomorrow at noon Pacific. So join us to catch part two. Stay tuned because we've got the XD Daily Creative Challenge with Elise coming up, followed by the Draw Along with Kyle T. Webster. So we will see you all tomorrow. Have a good day. Bye, Bye. guys.